studying cinema encompasses all aspects of the social, cultural, and political life in a given context. That's why the question, why study cinema in um, West uh, Africa? And the, the answer to this question is quite, quite obvious to me because cinema is indeed a marvelous insight into the changes which occurred in African societies, a way to highlight all kinds of phenomena. It implies indeed to take into account administrative regulations, including the control of movies circulating within the colonies, to be aware of the political economy of this leisure activity, as my focus is on commercial shows, to observe the cultural frame into which the movie shows took place, but also to analyze, of course, the impact of the movies, the sociology of the audience, the way this activity and place where was used by uh, the spectators, as well as by the authorities to uh, convey uh, messages. For all these reasons, cinema in Africa has largely been studied for more than two decades now. And I, as Mamadou Diawa has said, contributed to the general studies by writing uh, two uh, books as a thing to this, Fantomas sous les tropiques, Fantomas being the title of a movie in the 1930s, and in English, published by Hearst and uh, Oxford University Press, Tropical Dream Palaces, Cinema in Colonial uh, West uh, Africa. However, most studies are made by cultural, visual, or media researchers. They focus mainly on the movies themselves, either colonial movies, which shaped the gaze of the metropolis, or post-colonial African movies. Discourses about film policy and censorship have also been scrutinized, but here I'm less interested by discourses and theories than I am by the actual practices as we can decipher them through the sources. I will focus here on colonial times and commercial movie shows and address the question of mo movie going as a social and political act. This refers directly to the concept of agency. How did various segments of the population appropriate this new medium? To focus on going to the movies as the social and political act may, however, give too much weight to this aspect during colonial times. One should always bear in mind the fact that the main reason why people went to the movies in African colonies as well as elsewhere was to watch a movie, to relax, to have some fun, while indeed opening up one's mind to new worlds and drawing inspirations from the images. Some recent studies lend to transform all activities, including cinema, into political statements, signs of militancy and resistance. This was sometimes the case, as I will demonstrate, but one should not forget that out of thousands of movie shows, only a few left marks in archives and oral memories, which certainly result in a kind of distortion of our analysis. Nevertheless, to analyze movie going as a social and political act allows us to look at cinema as a dialogue between the spectators and the screen within a specific space, as a dialogue between the audience and the authorities, as a staging of social relations, and as a metaphor for the political situation. One must indeed bear in mind the highly disruptive and potentially subversive impact of moving images. They opened colonial subjects to entirely new worlds. 
but more fundamentally in the empire, moving images destroyed the polished image of the civilizing European, as this quotation from a British member of the censorship film committee in 1930 shows. I'm not going to read uh, out loud, you know, most of the quotation I uh, highlighted in red, you know, what I find um, important. And so you can see the contrast between the ideal of the European uh, men, especially at this time, and the images uh, shown by movies, but also at the end of the quotation, the competition between American and British movies in terms of representation of the British, which was another issue, uh, especially important in British uh, colonies. In about an hour, I don't pretend to fully cover the issue, but to suggest some avenues of research and leave time enough for discussion. So I will focus my talk on the general environment for movie shows and the sources which enable us to learn from this uh, experience. So let's turn to uh, going to the movies and local uh, agency. Even if sporadically people were forced to watch a movie or at least enticed to do so at school or during official propaganda or educative traveling shows, such as the ones studied by Tom Rice in the Gold Coast. And you have an image showing this kind of uh, educative traveling shows. Going to the movies were most of the time the result of a personal decision. This was sometimes done against the will of elders or parents, especially for girls, or in contradiction with some cultural, social, or religious habits. The example of Kano, northern Nigeria, where the Rex Theater was built by the Lebanese businessmen outside the old city, but with the permission of the Sultan in 1930. Um, seven uh, is really interesting for this reason because this theater was aimed at Christian migrants from the south but of course it attracted Muslim youth from Kano city from the old city. Another example of um, going to the movies as being obliged to do so is the famous narrative by Amadou Ampateba from Mali, who described how the district officer obliged the villagers to attend the movie show as early as 1808, 1908, and how the imam asked everybody to close his eyes. I don't think that there were many women, so we can keep the masculine form. So to keep his eyes in front of this diabolic invention. Uh, Amadou Ampateba as a young boy, he was not even 10 years old, could keep his eyes open, but he doesn't remember the movie he saw. Later, as a young adult, he took the habit of going on a regular basis to the movies in Bamako in the early 1930s. He's far from being the only one of his kind, of course. Cinema was a success everywhere when it was available with a very few exceptions. The problem was not the demand, but the supply. Movies were shown as early as 1898 in St. Louis, du Senegal, as uh, this uh, press expert abstract uh, shows you. And uh, also in Freetown, the press attest to the fact that there were early uh, movie theaters um, working you know, in the capital city of uh, Sierra Leone. Most of the time, however, cinema was limited to only big cities. Southern Ghana is an exception thanks to a businessman called Alfred John Okanse, 
who built a prestigious movie theater in Accra called the Palladium in the uh, mid 1920s, but also opened smaller movie theaters in other cities. And you have here the list in 1931 of the movie theaters which uh, operated in Southern Ghana. But when he died in 1943, most of the movie theaters uh, disappeared. More generally, by the mid 1940s, medium sized cities usually had their cinema, while traveling shows made it available to some villages and country people. But with their often unique cinema, the choice of movie was very limited. The underlying question is then who made the choice? And uh, how was uh, agency applied in this context if you don't have a choice to choose your uh, movie? To answer briefly the question about the choice, it was made by the owners of the film circuits, two main ones in French West Africa, a larger panel of entrepreneurs in the British colonies for various uh, reasons. By the end of the 1950s, big cities such as Lagos, Accra, Ibadan had several cinemas. But as these maps uh, show, the distribution of movie theaters was quite uneven between the coast and the hinterland. This is good. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, but we can't see your slides. Uh, have you changed the slides? Because we can't see now. I'm very sorry to interrupt. Is it, is it good now? Now we can see the, yes. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, when did you stop um, seeing my slides? Uh, no, this is the first slide. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, I must have pushed, you know, something with, without oh. knowing. So no. these are the, um, you know, the maps uh, which I uh, drew on the sources, uh, one from 62, the other one uh, some years earlier. And you can really see how more and more cities have their own cinema, but how the contrast is quite big between the south of uh, Nigeria and Gold Coast and the uh, interland. Uh, so in big cities, um, there were a choice of movie theaters, Dakar, for example. It's, yeah. Uh, Dakar had about 20 movie theaters at the time of uh, in the independence, more or less luxurious in the open air or enclosed. In these cities, the decision to go to the movies was therefore really a decision of choice which movie theater, which film, which atmosphere, because there was a link uh, between the space and um, the screening, which ticket prices, uh, all these questions are partly answered by a report which was made in Dakar in 1960, where a few moviegoers were being interviewed and I quote uh, some of the, the answers, uh, which uh, shows that most people went to the movie in their neighborhood. The decision to go to the movies entails indeed a lot of criteria, question of money, the price of the ticket, the cost of transportation as the first quotation shows, but also of social resources, the ease with which one moves around the city or one goes to the so-called European part of the city, the down, downtown part of the city. So even if some people, some people uh, leave their neighborhood, as the woman uh, says, uh, to go to the movies, most people went to the nearby cinema in their own neighborhood, which often reflected the social and racial hierarchy within the city. But how did these numerous moviegoers uh, experience 
the theater? How did they watch and make sense of the films? How did they learn uh, from the show? And eventually, how did they in incorporate some aspects of the films into their everyday uh, life? And this question leads me, lead me to talk about the sources, which are the basis of any historical analysis. When studying local agency, the historian often stumbles on the lack of documents or testimonies left by the African audience. So what kind of sources can we find to analyze cinema during colonial times? Accumulating uh, pieces of information is a long process, best done in a collaborative way, as information may consist of a few sentences here or there, an awkward picture found in a private collection. And I would like to show you this very amazing and rare picture of a private compound yard which is turned into a movie show place at night. And you can easily see the high canvas at the rear protecting the yard from the street. You can see the projection booth at the rear, but you can also see the two kinds of seats, the benches in front for the cheapest uh, tickets and the folded armchair uh, in the, uh, uh, at the back. So um, when I was given this picture, I was really amazed because I had read about this Madame Mal uh, movie uh, theater, but I had no idea how it would look like. And we can, from this picture, try to uh, imagine the, the atmosphere with the sound of the city uh, nearby. So uh, I go on with the, the kind of sources one can find. Um, um, so I mentioned a few sentences, pictures, but also private letters, just mentioning in passing um, film show. And here is also an interesting source from 1941. Um, a female student from um, Lomé, going back from Dakar to Lomé, uh, stopping in Bamako, and to entertain the students, they were shown a movie. And this um, very short quotation is interesting for us because it shows us at least two things. First, that girls were used to go to the movies, and second, they were used to the kind of movies uh, which were uh, shown uh, to everybody in the city. The process of accumulating sources is never ending as new sources can be found all the time, which makes, as you know, the joy of research. One of the best examples for me was the discovery of uh, Jean-Paul uh, Sivadier and his traveling uh, cinema. The picture announcing this lecture comes from his private collection. This traveling entrepreneur who toured French West Africa during four dry seasons from 1956 to 1959 got in touch with me after my book Fantomas had been published. He then gave me all his precious uh, material which he had preserved over the years and technologically updated all the time. Um, and so his sources contains a list of villages where he stopped and list of movies shown, statistics, pictures. Um, and I, I drew a map of uh, one of his drawing, which shows you how far I can go in six months, leaving from Kulikoro near Bamako and going as far as, um, as um, Senegal near Nist. He also wrote a narrative in 2003 
which I edited last year. And this is one of the books that Mamadou Diawara mentioned. Um, it was published last year. It's the narrative from this traveling entrepreneur, but also, of course, an analysis of this, um, of this uh, experience. And it contains over 50 pictures uh, coming from his own uh, collection. This uh, picture also comes from his collection and you can see here is uh, a truck um, in, uh, in Mali. I should stop on this uh, picture for a while. You can see here the canvas which limited the movie theater. You can also see the bills um, advertising two Western movies which were about to be shown. And you can also see the prices with two prices, grown-ups and children uh, written on one of the bills. But even with these rare sources, trying to recreate an atmosphere and especially studying the reception of movies, the reason why people laughed or shouted or more rarely cried is a very tricky thing. Some analyses, I must say, are based on spare proofs and extrapolate uh, their analyses. Furthermore, is the fact that the audience makes itself more visible in the 1950s related to changes in the political context, more freedom of speech, more political rights, to the level of schooling and a higher political consciousness, or is it related to the nature and quantity of sources available? As we know, the absence of source doesn't mean an absence of facts. Concerning the sources, we must take into account the fact that there are less sources produced by the moviegoers themselves. Interviews are um, a valuable source, but they cannot easily go back more than 60 years ago as memory mixes information. People like uh, Koulibaly Sumaila in Bouake are usually very happy to talk about their past, especially their youth, but they cannot always differentiate between what they experienced 50 years ago or 40 years ago or 30 years ago. Um, Sumaila Koulibaly stopped going to the movies after 61 because he was a truck driver and uh, didn't have the opportunity to stop in a movie theater anymore. So his memories are really, in this case, uh, li limit limited in um, certain years. Another experience also in Ivory Coast with uh, interviewing moviegoers and actors or entrepreneurs in the cinema activity was the interview with the Yakubit community in Ganyoa and uh, elsewhere. Yakuba Sila, the founder of this Muslim community, built seven movie theaters in central Ivory Coast in, uh, during the 1950s and the early 60s. Uh, and the members of the community also provided me valuable information while uh, controlling the history of their community. I just give you here uh, other aspects of this uh, not oral, but more material culture uh, sources. Uh, these are part of an old movie theater from the Jacobit community. And here is a ticket, um, cinema ticket from uh, Ganyoa, from Yakuba Silla, as you can read on the ticket itself. Written testimony, oh, the other thing is a bank note uh, which comes from Sivadier's collection and which shows uh, you the way people would take two bits of different banknotes and put them together to 
sort of create a new uh, invented banknote to pay uh, to pay the, the ticket waste. Uh, written testimony, which uh, do exist as we have seen in private uh, letters, memoirs, or novels, come mainly from educated moviegoers, a small per percentage of the audience, which uh, introduces another uh, bias. Here are some examples of these written sources, all from the 1930s. In his autobiographical narrative, Bernard Dadier from Ivory Coast, uh, recounts his youth at Grand Bassam uh, and the big event created by the arrival of the mobile movie tract, the role of musicians to attract spectators, the eager, eagerness, and I let you read uh, his novel at the same time, it's a biographical novel. Uh, you can also see, you know, the eagerness with which people invented ways not to have to pay by going under the canvas or uh, climbing on trees to look over uh, the fence. In the same way, in Freetown, uh, Farid Raymond Anthony uh, recounts its use and um, indicates the importance of movie shows even during the depression. This is the uh, two first quotations. Uh, he also uh, quote, talks about how enthusiastic is a group of friends was to go and watch Western, which, and this is the last bit of the quotation, made them want to enroll during the Second World War. And they were surprised not to be accepted because they had got so much experience from Western movie or, or action movies that they uh, felt ready to be uh, soldiers. Even more significant is this uh, testimony which describes a racial, racial confrontation in a movie theater in Bamako in 1938 when Birago Diop, a well-known member of a Senegalese family, confronts a racist white spectator. The two men start fighting, but the whole thing is properly uh, put to a stop to the advantage of uh, Diop. But what is more important is the lesson that he draws from this uh, experience. This is the conclusion of his narrative. I had exercised Bamako youth of their reverential and half a century old fear of the Tubabu, the white men. Indeed, because he came from an educated family, because he came from Senegal and he was a citizen in Senegal, a citizen of the four communes, he was able to talk back to this racist white guy. And you've got the quotation at the end here in French, uh, it's quite uh, direct, I would, I would say. So he was able to affirm his position because of his social position, but his conclusion really shows that most of the moviegoers couldn't do this because they didn't have the political and social resources to, um, to do this. So this testimony is uh, really uh, interesting. Indeed, uh, no official rule forbid or forbade anybody to sit, to sit where he or she wanted in the movie theater. There was no segregation in movie theaters in French West Africa or in British uh, Western uh, Africa. But of course, there was an unwritten colonial uh, law uh, or way of doing things, which imposed an implicit distribution uh, of people in the movie theater. And this is what Diop 
uh, uh, writes uh, in the first sentence saying that on the right hand side and in the first rows where the bench is for the natives. Uh, other sources, so um, I just uh, mentioned here uh, sources by uh, African moviegoers. Other sources are of course written by various members of the administration, travelers, ethnographers, but also geographers or sociologists who in the 1950s resorted to oral interviews to write their own reports. And one good example is the report by Jacques Lombard on uh, Cotonou in Benin, where he describes uh, at length uh, the cinema. And um, I'm not going to spend much time on this uh, source, but it's a way of saying that um, Nowadays, uh, interviews can't easily go back into colonial times, but we find in reports written in the 1950s or even earlier sometimes, uh, the traces of oral interviews made at this time. So Lombard is a good, uh, is a good example. Uh, I could also quote uh, Georges George Balandier, Sociologie des Brazzaville Noirs, and uh, other kind of uh, sources. The administration itself also produced all kinds of archives uh, which deal with cinema, reports, uh, surveys, minutes of the uh, censorship boards, regulations, statistics, and so on. One must also mention the press, such as the, this uh, magazine called Colonial Cinema published by the Colonial Film Unit in, uh, in London, and also newspapers. But um, these newspapers, as you may guess, uh, were aimed at an educated or at a literate uh, audience, and they very rarely uh, mention working class uh, movie theaters or working class programs. They deal with the most luxurious movie theaters, in, in this case in downtown uh, Abidjan. Um, I should not forget the iconography, you know, pictures of movies, of old movie theaters, but I already uh, showed you a few examples. All these European sources have, of course, to be read against the grain to hear local voices. Um, and I would like uh, now to go on and uh, give you some ideas about movie going as a social and political act before leaving time for questions. By talking about agency and about sources, I already have given much information about cinema as a socially significant event. The mixing of ages, gender, origin, and occupations, as you can see it here in Nyono in, uh, in Mali, it's an example of the diversity of the audience. So this mixing is also an important aspect of uh, cinema activity, which brought together people who would not otherwise meet. However, despite the diversity of moviegoers, the most numerous ones were young boys or men, which explains the prevalence of Western and action movies and the kind of cowboy or bill culture, which developed, uh, especially in the Congos, has been studied uh, by various researchers. Uh, here you can see uh, another kind of diversity of the audience at um, a village near Tuba in the Mored. Uh, countryside in, in Senegal, and it's a picture taken from the movie uh, theater. I mentioned the fact that most of the moviegoers were young men or, um, or youth, uh, male youth, and this program 
uh, really reflects the usual range, the usual range of movies and the importance of American movies, usually more than 50%. Um, so this is the program of the, the first um, tournée, uh, the first uh, year, the first dry season that Sivadier uh, uh, worked, but it really reflects what we could see in other uh, movie uh, theaters, a mixture, as you can see, of comedies, Western action movies, plus one uh, Egyptian uh, movie. So most, uh, more than half of these movies were uh, American. Uh, in French colonies, uh, they were all dubbed, which questions the capacity of the audience to actually understand the meaning of the words and to make sense of the story. Because the dialogues did not have to be translated in British colonies, control over the circulation of American movies was much more difficult for the British authorities. Uh, in terms uh, of the mixing of the movie girls, I would like just to stress the fact that women usually stopped going to the movies once married for lack of financial resources, lack of time, but also for social reasons. In some cases, they would go either with their husbands or with other women, but usually during the afternoon, and they would favor Egyptian or uh, Indian movies uh, with uh, dances and songs uh, but also this kind of movies being uh, seen as being closer to local ways. Of course, the fact of sharing the same space as we have seen with Birago Diop, uh, often not the same rows or location in the movie theater, does not mean that the spectators share the same experience. But here too, agency was at work increasingly in the 1950s with the rise of living standards and political rights. And here, uh, taken from the same survey made in Dakar in 1960, you can see quotations saying that uh, people would pay uh, more expensive tickets in order to sit at the rear of the movie theater because it was more comfortable, but also quieter. They would uh, not uh, be among very young moviegoers, uh, very loud ones. So this is also uh, a, a trace of um, agency in the movie uh, theater. Over the years, a movie culture or behavior was shaped allowing reactions which would otherwise be constrained or restricted or controlled. As elsewhere, meaning not only in Africa, darkness allows spontaneous attitudes and or expressions of opinions which could otherwise not easily take place outside especially before the mid 1940s when political rights when were suppressed. Shouting can be an expression of excitement or joy, but can also of course convey more profound meaning. Such reactions much, must have happened early on, but they are not well documented. Here is an example from the 1930s, as recounted by uh, Raymond Beaumont, another traveling entrepreneur who worked in Ivory Coast and Upper Volta from 1937 to 1974 with an interruption during the war. The anecdote tells us a lot about the audience reaction and its sensitivity. I never showed a boxing fight between a white and a black where the white lost as the audience became sort of mad 
and threatened to destroy everything, even in the most remote places. When the right was the winner, the audience was silenced. This clearly indicates the kind of topics which were sensitive during colonial times at a time when all Western movies conveyed racist and sexist stereotypes. It's obvious that many similar um, anecdotes or reaction must have existed, but are lost uh, forever because we don't have the sources. So this one is quite uh, uh, interesting. Political authorities did not pay much attention to movie theaters before the end of the 1920s, when the invention of talking movies made films accessible to more people. Censorship boards quickly followed, but their activity was often restrained and could not always foresee the spectator's reaction. This is you know, the trick of a censorship board uh, on which only set European who didn't know much uh, usually about African cultures or the way African would just react to, um, to um, Western movies. Uh, we, here is a good example of how the censorship board wasn't able to foresee the audience reaction. After the Second World War, French people wanted to celebrate French resistance to German occupation. In this context, La Bataille du Rail, movie directed by René Clément and recipient of the Prix International du Jury of the first Cannes Festival in 1946, was proudly shown in Dakar when it was released. No uh, piece of archive attests to problems when the film was shown in 46. But three years later at Nam Niamey, it's another context and another story. Making a parallel between the German occupation and the colonial domination, a political uh, leader declared we should imitate the French in Paris and not, and not fear to shed our blood for our country and our freedom. The movie was immediately censored on the spot and a Western shown uh, indeed. A military officer commented in a secret report uh, and I quote that this was said in front of a local audience, which did not understand right or understood too well, which is a statement which takes us away from the usual image of Africans as naive people. The army asked for a stricter control on movies, arguing that many of them are lessons of sabotage. Another kind of movies also uh, imprompted reactions. Egyptian movies were also this kind of moments when especially Muslim audience could express some kind of political statement. The films evoking Islam were a big hit. In 1953, The Dawn of Islam, the first historical movie about the birth of the religion, drew a total of more than 20,000 spectators in Dakar over nine days in five cinemas. The film was then regularly rescreened, re notably during uh, Muslim festivities uh, or Ramadan. During screenings, some spectators would chant Allahu Akbar, provoking the wrath of the colonizers. By shouting Allahu Akbar, the audience showed indirectly 
its support to Nasser and his nationalist policy at a time when independence was more and more, of course, talked about. And you can see uh, two quotations. The first one stressing the fact that Egyptian movies are not as um, unharmful as they uh, look like, but they can uh, sort of hide um, a stance for uh, nationalism, Arab nationalism. But as the second quotation um, uh, writes, most of the Arab movies already strictly censored in Egypt itself were, and I quote, of a high moral standard. So it was quite difficult for the colonial authorities to uh, find a reason to censor uh, these, uh, these movies. More generally, in the 1950s, spectators would react strongly to racist remarks in movies, which pushed a censorship board to scrutinize the movies more carefully and suppress offensive remarks to anticipate such uh, reactions. And now as a kind of uh, conclusion, it's more uh, an opening than a conclusion, I would like to um, open the discussion to the present time. Uh, you have here a few pictures of old uh, movie theater, the older one being uh, Sandaga in the 1920s in uh, Dakar on the farm left. Um, what happened in the 50s, what I just uh, described, was only the start of the big success of movie shows in African countries, which lasted till the late 1970s, when a competition with cheaper media, economic crisis, curfew, for example, in Ghana in 81, urban insecurity pushed owners to close their movie theaters down and destroyed this leisure activity, which had attracted thousands of moviegoers for decades. However, going to the movies after independence has rarely been studied by historians which really focus on cinema and the resistance to colonialism. There are a few exceptions, such as Laura Fair book, Real Pleasures, Cinema Audiences and Entrepreneurs in 20th Century Urban Tanzania. And in this book, Laura Fair studies the development of film of film regulation under Nyerere and after, and the way that uh, Tanzanians related to the screen, confirming the success of Indian movies versus Hollywood blockbusters. But she is one of the rare exceptions for studying going to the movies after the independence. I'll just show you a few of these um, movie theaters which have been uh, closed, um, uh, closed down at the end of the 20th century and trans transformed into warehouses or uh, just um, demolished like this one in Conakry or used as uh, lodging or shops. Is a, a shop uh, too. Mm -hmm. As I pointed out at the beginning, most recent studies deal with film, video production, or more recently TV, TV series produced in Nigeria, Ghana, and now also Ivory Coast uh, or Senegal. Now that most of the movie theaters are closed, except in big malls or luxury hotels catering for a well-off audience, 
how do images which circulate more and more on private phones or TVs impact the average spectator? How are these local and foreign images used to transform local cultures uh, in times of globalization? And I end with this uh, picture, which is one of the rare uh, collective ways uh, of uh, watching movies nowadays uh, in what is called the blue zone uh, in uh, Conakry. And uh, in this example, they were showing a Guinean movie which attracted uh, many moviegoers and uh, also implied uh, shouting and expression and, comment and comments from the spectators. I will uh, end my talk here and uh, thank you for listening. I hope uh, you could understand uh, me uh, and I'm open to any uh, questions. <laughs>